How's everybody doing this morning? Glorious? I heard a glorious. Heard an awesome. Doing awesome. What a great, great, great morning to be with you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for what you're going to do today. And we pray now as we spend these moments, this first time we gather together together today with you. Pray that you'd speak to us, that you'd glorify yourself uh, in our lives. And God, would you do something in us today uh, that would change us? Lord, we are men. And we have the passions of men. We have the problems of men. We want to have your purposes in our lives. We want to know your plans. And so, God, would you speak to us? We ask these things in Jesus' name. All God's men said, Amen. Amen. Take your seats, guys. What a joy. Austin and I were blasting down the freeway driving up and you know, I have a little thing in my office that says, never drive faster than your angel can fly. <laughs> I think we were okay. <laughs> we may have left the angel behind a couple of times. Be a turn to 1 Samuel 17. Familiar chapter to us, but I want to point out just really one thing this morning as we begin our day. I don't know about you, but many times in my life, I have a tendency to look at things from the negative side of things. I'm generally a very positive person and generally a very joyful person. I I like to see the good in most everything, but sometimes in the quietness of my own heart and my own things that God's doing in my life, I, I fail to see sometimes the things that he allows as, as he wants me to see them. And that is the case, uh, looking back, David, on his life. We'll pick up in verse 28 here, in First Samuel 17, down to verse 37. And I want to read it really as a story to you. And it says, Now Elahab and his eldest brother heard, when he spoke to the men, that Eliab's anger was aroused against David. And he says, Why have you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? So David immediately is getting kind of picked on a little bit by his brother. Don't know if you've ever had that. I have a younger brother. But uh, if you have a brother, you, you know that part of having a brother is picking and fighting and beating on each other from time to time. Now, I know your pride and insolence of your heart, for you've come down to see the battle. Isn't it like us? We, we question the motivation of virtually everyone and everything. And David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? You have something against me? And he turned towards him, towards the other, and he said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first ones did. He's basically making his plea to the crowd now. We'll try and make our little alliances and allegiances. And now when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul and they sent for him. And then David said to Saul, let, let no man's heart fail because of him. He's speaking, of course, of Goliath. And your servant will go and fight this Philistine. Lunch boy to warrior. And Saul said to David, you're not able to go up against this Philistine to fight with him. For you're a youth, and he's a man of war from his youth. He says, you're you're a kid, he's a soldier. He's a man, you're not. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came, he took the lamb out of the flock. I went out after it and struck it. And delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and I struck and killed it. And we get a picture of David's life. His life as a child. His life as a young person. His life as a youth. And so very often we, we think that we're tending sheep. But God's building us. 
We, we think we're doing the dirty work, but God's doing the great work. We, we think we're doing the insignificant, but God is doing the very significant in our lives. In verse 36, and the ones that I want to focus in on in our remaining time, for your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Seeing is defiled the armies of the living God. And more of what David said to him, Lord, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion, from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go, and the Lord be with you. David was fired up by his faith in God. He had watched God work. And, and men, we need to be looking where God is working in our lives. And sometimes it's in places that we least expect. And it's in areas where we really feel like there's very little chance, if any, that God could be at work in that area of our life. And so some questions come up for us. And I would ask you a simple one. Whose wisdom, whose strength, whose power? And whose strength are you going out in today? Is it your strength? Is it my strength? Is it the strength of the church, strength of the family? Or is it the strength of the Lord? Because if it's the strength of the Lord, it will be sufficient for every single day. Every time you wake up, you'll have what you need. And in our story here, I always look at this. And, you know, growing up, there were a handful of movies that were in Technicolor back when I was a little guy. And probably some of you old enough in this room, you remember Wonderful World of Disney on Sunday nights, and you know, you waited all week long to watch basically one television show. But once a year, they always showed The Wizard of Oz, and it was in color. And, and you know, almost every child on the face of the planet, you know, lions and tigers and bears, oh my, lions and tigers and bears, you know, and you, you remembered these songs, you remembered these chants, and you remember those Four people joined together, tripping off to Oz. And it's very much like us. And there's an analogy, much like the story here in David's life. You remember the cowardly lion, no courage. And basically you can look at his life spiritually and say he was one of those guys that would say, I won't do it. You can look at the scarecrow, and he said he had no brain. And spiritually speaking, you might say he couldn't do it. You can look at the tin man, no heart, and he would say, I shouldn't do it. And you can look at Dorothy, I can't do it. No faith, unbelief. And yet when you look at David, he was looking at every lion and every bear that he'd ever fought. And his faith began to grow. He's looking at every problem he'd ever faced. And he'd watch God been faithful in each one. And so the I won'ts turned into I will. And the I couldn't turned into I can. And I shouldn't into I better. And those things that are I can't, I absolutely have to. You see, David is a model for us because all of us are going to face lions and bears. And they're training. They're God working in your life. You're going to wake up and there are going to be things in your life that you're going to have to go grab it by the beard and you're going to have to kill it. It may be some area of sin in your life. It may be some place where you're just having a tough time with your character. It may be at work. It may be at home. It may be in your relationship with your children. There are going to be times in your life where God is very much at work. And you're going to need to change those I won'ts into I wills. And you're going to need to change those I couldn'ts into I absolutely must. 
You're going to have to have that kind of faith that says, if a lion comes after me and comes after my family, comes after my church, comes after us as the family of God, I'm going to grab it by the beard and I'm going to slay it. Because you are being prepared for what God has for you in your life. Because you are not going to get to pick the time when you're going to be able to face that giant. The one thing that God has marked out before the beginning of time that's going to be the big thing in your life. The one thing that you're going to, to be asked to do where you could say, I, I can't. You, you could say, I, I don't know if I should. You, you could say, I, I just will not. Long before David was a great king, he was the runt of the litter. He was a shepherd. He, he got the dirty work, he got the dirty job, he, he got the insignificant things. Brothers, don't despise the insignificant things in your life. Because to you they may be the lions and bears that are training you for what lies ahead. So very often we want to skip to the grandiose, we want to skip to the big things, we want to be someplace where we currently are not. That's us as men, we're like that, Amen. Nobody in here wants to be a loser, I hope. Amen? Amen. You know, I think we all like winning. Amen? Amen? I cried last night after the Clipper game. In case you didn't know, they lost by three. But I sure love watching Austin Rivers with the stitches in his upper eyebrow and the lower cheek after taking an elbow. Because that's my kind of guy. Goes in, gets sewed up, goes back on the court. Gentlemen. Go get hit in the face, go in the locker room, go get stitched up, and get back on the court. Because that's God training you. That's God working in your life. You see part of David's family duties. You ever look back? You, it's like no family gives chores anymore. I had chores growing up. Did anybody have chores when you were growing up? And if you didn't do them, your father would, would grab you by the beard and beat you. It was okay then. You know, we considered that love when dad beat you half to death. It's like, thanks dad, I knew I needed that. It was, it was, a, it was manly love. But you remember those chores, you know, it was usually, we had the old real mowers, you know, the ones that you had to, you had to put some elbow grease into that puppy. And if it was dull, you'd be better off chewing the grass off. You know what I'm saying? You know, and you'd be over there and you have to go like three times if the grass got more than an inch tall. You're like, <laughs> you know, you'd be grinding away at that. You know, it was my job to keep the lawn mowed. And dad would come, you know, I used to think, wow, that's just, this is, this is awful. You know, I never had anything in our yard that would eat me. So, so as David is, is doing his family chores that included fighting off animals that could kill him. But even that was the training ground for a bigger challenge in his life. Do you look at everything that God allows in your life as something that God could use in the future? Maybe even in the present, but quite probably in your future that's shaping your character, that's molding you into the man that he wants you to be. From the very onset of his life, David was being trained up. He was being sparked into that, into that flame that would burn later in life. And David, if anything, for us, is one of those guys that you can look at, you know, just tremendous success and tremendous failure, all wrapped up in one, amen? And I don't want to overemphasize the failures of David, but he had some, and they were whoppers. He had some areas of his life that you could certainly look back on, and you go, man, God help me never to repeat those failures. But even in that, he's still training us today, isn't he? Even by that negative example. And so God's at work in our lives. Very often I, I think we, we don't look as hard at, as we should at some of the things that God allows us to, to engage in when we're in that training stage. I look back at my own life and especially my time in ministry and you know, some three decades now. And I can tell you there are those, those first half of that, probably 10 or 15 years, I'm like, Lord, I left corporate America for this. 
And I had that conscious thought in my mind. It's like, what are you, you know, there, there's, I'm working with people who can't tie their own shoes. You know, why would you have me doing this? I had my own companies before I was 30 years old. I had people that can't cook their own meals. And I look back on it and God was teaching me things that I needed to learn. I'd skipped over. I, I couldn't see those things that God was doing at that time. And I now look back on it and they were absolutely necessary. They seemed insignificant. They seemed pointless. I was listening to a couple of conversations and you know, it's, it's, always, it's always fun listening to, to Marines, because once a Marine, always a Marine. Yeah, got the hoorah guys in here right now. Hoorah! But, but you listen, and, and you listen to some of the, you know, they're talking about going to, I grew up in San Diego, so I'm very familiar with the MCRD, Marine Corps Recruit Depot, and, you know, I had friends that were down there, and I actually, I, I can't tell everybody, but I enlisted in the Navy at the end of the Vietnam War, and they called off the war, so I didn't get to serve. But, but I, I remember some of the exercises, and guys would they, they'd be talking about, yeah, you know, we dig this hole, and we'd dig it in one spot, and then Gunny would come by and tell us to fill it in. And we'd fill it in, and then he'd tell us to dig it out again. And wanted to kill him after. But, but you, were, you were being trained to follow orders without questioning why. That was the reasoning. It had nothing to do with the hole, had nothing to do with the dirt, it had nothing to do actually with the work. It had everything to do with you listening and following without questioning. Will you do that with the Lord? Will you let Him give you things that are your lions and your bears so that when Goliath comes, you won't question what He tells you to do? Because he may ask you to dig a hole and fill it in. And we have to do it, guys. Because that's how we grow. You may not think so. Or God's going to ask you to do some things that you're going to look back on. You go, man, I don't know why I'm doing this. And furthermore, you're not going to want to do it. And yet it's the very thing that the Lord knows you need. Let me tell you another thing. You're not going to learn to be a man of war when you're in that circumstance. You're going to need to already be a man of war when it comes up. You, you can't go into training when Goliath faces you. You have to have been trained before you face Goliath. That's what God's doing in your life right now. He's training you up. Your marching orders are this. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. And in all of your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will guide and direct your path. And He's going to take you down some paths that you do not want to go on. That's because He's preparing you to be a man of war. He's going to use you. And He knows what He's doing. I look back and think on my own life and some of the most wonderful things the Lord has allowed in my life have been the most painful things that the Lord has allowed in my life. And at times, the seemingly most meaningless things that he's allowed. It's like, seriously, Lord? I got to do that? I was teaching at the Bible college and I, you know, and I, I thought, you know, after a couple of years, you know, surely they're, 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 I'm going to be able to, you know, teach some of the core classes and the bigger classes. And I, I remember I was talking to Pastor Chuck in his office, and he goes, oh, yeah, I, you know, I, we should do that. You know, you should, you should really, uh, I want you to do the Gospels. Or, you know, he, he just went on and on and on. And so I, I get my class schedule, and I'm teaching exactly the same class that I taught the year before. And, and I'm like... I, Chuck said, this is what the schedule says. So I, so I walk into Larry Taylor's office and I go, well, well, Chuck told me to do this. He said, well, uh, I, 
had you teach in a different class, but Chuck called me and said, because you complained, you should teach the same class again. <laughs> I want to kill him. Well, I'm sending you home to Jesus early. But I learned a lesson. It, it was a lion. It was a bear. It's like, Lord, am I doing what I'm doing because of you? Or am I doing what I'm doing because I think I'm, I'm ready or I deserve it or whatever? And God just said to me, look, you just do what I tell you to do. You leave all the rest of it to me. David was trained in battle for Goliath before he ever saw Goliath. It's just such a beautiful picture of our lives. And Look, you don't want to refuse those things. If you want to be ready, you just say yes to every single thing that God tells you to do. Just say yes. You can't go wrong saying yes. You know, when you have those, those things in your life to where God's, God's at work, every day's an adventure. You know, even the seemingly meaningless things. You know, it's a privilege to be used in any way, shape, or form by the Lord. And if it's simply... You're going to be an amazing husband, a wonderful father. You're going to be a great friend, an amazing co-worker. Maybe you're a business, whatever it is, you do all to the glory of the Lord. Everything that you do is an opportunity to minister. Don't forsake the small things, the seemingly meaningless things, the places where you might say, I can't, I won't, I shouldn't, I will not. You just say, I will, here am I, do what Isaiah said. Here am I, Lord, send me. And God will be preparing you for what he has when you face your Goliath. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. God, for those meaningless times in our lives to us. Lord, we look at things and we... We can't see you at work, but Lord, you are at work, accomplishing your will and pleasure in our lives. Pray that you would help us to seize every opportunity to grab every lion and every bear. Lord, that we would be ready when you send Goliath our way. And so God, take these men today and encourage and strengthen and bless them, fill them, anoint them, give them a wonderful time with you today. Refresh them. Lord, would you lift the burdens? Lord, I know many have come carrying weight that is too heavy. Lord, it's crushing their shoulders. God, would you bring alongside uh, a brother to bear, to, to share, to care about that burden. Lord, that it might be lifted and made light by you, Jesus. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for your goodness to us, Lord. We ask all these things in the wonderful name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Amen, brothers.